Hey everybody, welcome back to Cooking with Grandmommy, where you know food is all about love and everybody's welcome. We are in the middle of Michigan apple season. We've made applesauce and applesauce cake, and we're going to continue on that theme today with variations of apple pie. We're going to make apple crisp, apple crumb, and apple pie. Three versions, and we're working from simple to the more complex. So, let's get started. I have my apple pie, apple crumb, and apple crisp mixture already made. It's the same. The way you get your apples ready is the same for all three of these recipes. So in this bowl I have five apples that are sliced. I like Northern Spies. You can use other apples to make apple pie, but it has the apple slices, white sugar, brown sugar, cinnamon, and flour. So for apple crisp, I'm going to just go ahead and pour this filling into my pie pan. When you stir all those things together, see the juice in here? Your apples will juice up like that. So you want to do this first before you get started with your other steps and stir it a few times while you're preparing your toppings or your pie doughs and you will see that it will make this this yummy what will become a syrup a nice gooey syrup inside once you bake it so I've poured that into my pan and just take the spatula and make sure you kind of even them out in your pan and then in this bowl I have prepared oatmeal brown sugar flour butter and cinnamon and don't I will we'll get all this posted for you so you can you can find it uh, once the video is up and running the recipe will be attached so now in this I used a pastry blender or a big fork just to get it all together and you can see it's real lumpy it's not supposed to be smooth because there's chunks of butter in here so I'm gonna take this mixture and just spread it around on the top of my pie and this is going to become a crunchy crispy top so this is an easy way to serve apple pie if you're not real good at making pie crust yet, but now you want to keep practicing. If you're cutting back on calories and you don't want the calories in the pie crust. And it's a great, like a beginner way to learn how to start making apple pie because the filling is exactly the same. So I'm piling it on, smoothing it out, See, when you're in the kitchen, you can play with your food. Bringing it all over to the edges. By the way, my oven is on 350. That's where we're going to bake this. This is a 9-inch pie pan. Looking good. And, of course, anything with cinnamon smells good, right? All right. So... There's the apple crisp ready to go into the oven. I'm going to put it in at 350 and I'm going to bake it, oh, for about 45 minutes. And boy, is my house going to smell good. So, let me pop this in the oven. Yum, yum. Hey, Siri. Set the timer for 45 minutes. Your timer is set for 45 minutes. I think Siri was a little slow. Must be sleeping this morning. All right, next one we're going to work on is called an apple crumb. And an apple crumb pie has a crust on the bottom, and then you put a crumbly topping, and it's different than the apple crisp topping. So let me get my counter cleared off. I have my pie dough pre-made, I had it stuck in the fridge, and we're going to roll this out. When you roll a pie crust, you want to make a circle, and here's the pattern. You want to roll up and down in the shape of a cross. And then you want to roll in the shape of an X. 
and when you get done it will re somewhat resemble a circle but it will fit very well into your pie pan. So in the shape of a cross and then in the shape of an X. Ooh, and this one's looking great. I like using butter and lard in my pie crust. You can use just one or the other. You can use Crisco. You just have to have some fat in there. So, cross, X, and there we go. Now, I'm making this one larger than my pie pan. Typically, you would just, you know, set your pan over there and see if you've gotten it the right size. And I've made this one bigger because I'm going to fold the crust over. I'll show you that as we get going. So, I have my pie crust rolled out. How do I get it in this in this plate? So, put it over your rolling pin. If you have a lot of extra flour, you can shake it off. Get the flour out of the way so I'm not setting my pie plate down into it. Unroll it. You can straighten it up if it goes in crooked, and it probably will. All right, press it down in there just a bit. Same mixture. Apples, brown sugar, white sugar, flour and cinnamon. Pour it right into the pie crust. Even it out, spread it around. Mm. All right, now, if you like, if you, if you don't like this look, the one I'm going to do is kind of a rustic pie look. If you don't like that, you can take a knife and just cut this down and, and press your crust down. But this is the way I like to do it. I just fold the crust up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this backwards. It's funny how you keep learning as you cook. Let's put our crumb topping on and then we'll fold the crust up. So the crumb topping is different than the apple crisp because this has no oatmeal. It's just butter, flour, and brown sugar, and cinnamon. So I'm going to sprinkle this on the top. Spread it around. I'm going to kind of keep this a little toward the middle just because I'm getting ready to fold that crust over. So I don't have to get too much of this right over to the edges. So there's the crumb. Now, let's take the crust, bring it up over the edge of the apples. Leave it so that it covers, like you want to make sure that it still kind of covers the edge of your pie pan, your pie plate. Just bring it up. And that looks kind of like a rustic apple pie. But we don't have to worry about putting a second crust on top. We're going to do that next. That's the most challenging part. So if you start by just using the apple crisp or you don't need a crust, you'll kind of start building up your confidence and your courage to make the full apple pie with the top and the bottom. All right, this one is ready to go. Now because this one has a crust, we're going to bake it a little differently. We want that bottom crust to bake on and we're going to put it into a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes and then we'll turn it down uh, to continue baking. Now, we're going to do a full apple pie this time. So, we're going to roll out the pie dough for the bottom and for the top. You know, pie dough tastes pretty good by itself. Did you ever have a grandma who uh, took the extra pie dough and baked it with cinnamon and sugar on it. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, we're going back to making the cross and the X. That will give us a round shape for our pie crust. And listen, working in the kitchen is a pretty good workout here. you got to put some, put some muscle behind this to get this dough to roll out. Putting some pressure on. You know, sometimes in life we have to go through things that really put the pressure on. But the great news about that is our Heavenly Father always uses it to make us stronger and better. It's not necessarily fun, but it's so necessary. Now this pie I'm going to make just a little larger because the apples 
the bowl of apples I have uh, is a little larger than the other two and I don't want my uh, filling to bake out. So I have, I've, I've pulled out a larger pie pan for this one. So my crust is rolled and I'm going to pick it up on my rolling pin, put it over the pie plate. Press it in. And now I'll put in my filling. Same filling we've been using all along. Apples, flour, brown sugar, white sugar, and cinnamon. lot of good juice left in there. Let me get it out. All right. Now this is one of those uh, times where you could end up with extra pie crust. So I'm going to take my bench knife and I'm going to take off the extra crust because this is the bottom. Remember, I'm going to put a top crust on here. So this could be some of that extra crust. You put a little cinnamon sugar on and bake it. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside and roll the top crust. Good time to learn pies, right? Because Thanksgiving is going to be just around the corner. So you've got time to practice just a little bit. So you can make that perfect pumpkin if you like it, or apple, or pecan, and the list goes on and on. So let's start rolling again with our X and our cross. All right, I think that will do it. And remember, you can always measure by, like, just bring your pie pan over and look at what you have there. And that will tell you how much you have around the edges, if you've rolled enough, so that you have coverage on the pie plate. Roll it up. Get the extra dough flour off the counter. And let's put this on top. All right. Now, you'll see in some places here that I have too much dough. So I'm going to cut this so that the pie crust is kind of like touching the countertop. That's usually about enough. If it's too much more than that, it's going to be hard to roll it up, fold it up, and get a nice edge on there. So I'm going around, cutting off the extra dough on the ends. All right. Move those over, get my flour out of the way so I'm not pushing it off in the floor here. Now, here's what we're going to do. Pick up your top crust. As you're folding it down, I have picked up the bottom crust between my fingers and I've put the crust over. What that's doing is sealing in the bottom crust. So I'm picking up the bottom and pinching it between the fold I'm making and the top crust. Pick this up, fold that under. Pinch your bottom crust, you can feel it in there, pinch it into the, the fold of the top crust. And don't worry, you'll miss it sometimes. It's not perfect. It will taste great. So we're continuing around and we're folding our top crust and pinching the bottom inside. There we go. Now that that's all in, this is how I like to make a nice edge on my crust. I take these two fingers and this one and I make a nice little crease in there. Just to make it look pretty, right? Pretty and tasty. So I'll just keep going around, pressing it between these two fingers with my forefinger here. So 
So we have pinched our edges together and there's a lot of pretty designs you can use. My mom did this one and it's just the one I've always used. So now that I've done that, this pie is sealed up and we need the steam to come out of this pie. So we're going to take a knife and put some slits in the top. I like to put a big A in here because it's apple. If the grandkids are helping, we'll put their initial in here. But whatever you want to do, you just need some vents to let the steam out while the pie is cooking. So there's my A for apple. The edges are crimped. Now this one, remember what we did with the last one when you have a bottom crust, you want to bake it at 400 for 20 minutes and turn it down for the rest of the baking. So let's stick this one in the oven. So apple season at Grandmommy's house. Get some of those good Michigan apples. The Northern Spy, which is my favorite apple for apple pies, is just coming in uh, around the 1st of October. So I'll be getting out to the orchard to buy about a bushel full of those so I can get them in the freezer and have apples to make pies all year long. Thank you so much for being here with Grandmommy today. And remember, at Grandmommy's house, food is all about love and everybody's welcome. See y'all. Bye-bye.